The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Tuesday, October 11th, and um, we'll be reading our epistle lesson for this week, which is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. I'll be getting this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I will give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the re revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the grace that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We thank you that in every way we are enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, and that even that uh, testimony is confirmed among us that we are not lacking in any spiritual gift as we await the revealing of our Lord Jesus on the last day. We thank you for the promise that we will be sustained to the end, guiltless in that day of our Lord Jesus, because you are faithful, and you have called us into the fellowship of your Son, Jesus, by his life, his death, his resurrection, and by the call of your Holy Spirit through your word, by which we have that faith that clings to your promises and gives us that benefit of his work, as he even now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so as we have this, uh, this is the beginning of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. And as you read the letter, you, re you find that there's a, a lot of stuff. I mean, the, the church in Corinth is kind of a mess, right? And, uh, you know, you've got these, uh, the, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this here in a second. You've got these, what Paul kind of calls super apostles that have, have moved in. And, and they're, they're very spiritual, right? They're, they're um, very connected to the Holy Spirit, much more than you are kind of thing. And, um, you know, there's this quarreling that they bring with them and, and um, you know they, 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 they do this because they show how spiritual they are by, by their gifts. You know they speak in tongues. They they, um, they, they, they interpret those tongues, and they, they, they have these special messages from God for you, and and, and that kind of stuff. And, um, and and Paul Paul sees how this is becomes so divisive, and and so you get these these sects that that appear within within the church, and you see that referenced in in the beginning. Uh, you have got some who follow Paul, some who follow Apollos, some who follow. Peter, Cephas, right, Cephas, and um, some who make sure that they are, are super pious and just say that they follow Christ, and and um, you know, and I I don't know who, how these are divided amongst these super apostles and that sort of thing. Doesn't really say, but but you have Paul addressing this, and um, it, it says that this is uh, so. So it starts off the letter um, to to address this. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And our brother Sosthenes. Now Sosthenes, uh, the note uh, reminds me, I'd forgotten. He's a, a Corinthian synagogue ruler that we see in Acts 18.17, beaten by the frustrated crowd at Paul's trial. So um, my guess would be what we're, what we're assuming here is that Sosthenes has come to Paul either uh, to work with him just in general or because he's got these issues at the church in Corinth. And, um, and so they're writing to... To, to deal with those issues, um, you know that that maybe may, may not be right. I I meant to look into it a little bit more and, and didn't, but uh, but that's what we see. So we see Paul and Sosthenes. Nonetheless, we know Paul and Sosthenes are writing to the church in Corinth, and as it says, to the church of God that is in Corinth, those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. And uh, there's this reminder that we are saints, right? As we think of saints, we often think of, uh, you know, 
St. Peter or St. Paul or you know, maybe St. Augustine or these, these people have gone before us in the faith. Um, in particular, as we might associate that term saint with Catholicism, with Roman Catholicism, then there's this understanding that the, the church exalts certain people and says that they are certainly saints and to be exalted as such. And we say, no, no, uh, we're, we're all, all Christians are saints. To be a saint is one sanctified, as it says in Christ Jesus, one who is holy. And we are holy by the blood of Christ. We are cleansed by that blood. So we have that, that certainty of, um, of, of that holiness in him, not, not by any merit or worthiness in us, not by our own doing, uh, not by sanctifying ourselves per se, but by that blood of Christ. And of course, as we are made anew in Christ, we, we seek to, to mortify our sinful flesh that keeps us from being holy. Uh, as Luther says, by daily contrition and repentance, but uh, but but that is that that new man that lives in us by 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 water and and um, in the spirit, right? The new birth of water and the spirit, baptism. Uh, three, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that greeting of of uh, of Paul, wishing, or not even wishing, speaking God's grace to them, right? And then he continues, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace that, of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. And, and this, um, this promise that, um, you know, that they have God's grace in Christ. And then you have, uh, you have some allusions, as it goes here, to this, this division that's happening with these super apostles. Uh, as he says, that in every way you are enriched in him in all speech and knowledge. Uh, notice he's making sure they they know as uh, that as Christians they are enriched in Christ. Not you don't have the the super Christians over here that are enriched in the in the non or maybe yeah, might might not be true Christians over here that that aren't enriched. Uh, that, you know it's not to say are some better examples of the faith and others not. Sure, of course. I mean that that happens, right? But but you can't make this division between these are the true Christians and these are them you know maybe not so true Christians, right? We go. We go by the the confession, and, and unless we see, you know, unless we see gross, manifest, unrepentant sin, as we call it, and and even then, that's that can be hard to hard to delineate, and we need to we need to really investigate it. Uh, well, <laughs> as I say that, we need to be careful how we investigate it. Right? That's not something that's just you know I I shouldn't be digging through my my neighbor's trash to find out if he's a a, a true Christian or not kind of thing, right? It's um, something where it has to be um, dealt with in love and patience, right? And that's really, uh, we saw that with, with Galatians 5 when Paul talked about gently restoring those who have fallen away. And it has to be very gentle, very patient, and probably isn't something that Christians just do on their own generally. It's That's why you have meeting with the person privately, then two or three, then than the, uh, the church altogether. And that two or three, you probably ought to involve a pastor. Um, in any case, I kind of went down a tangent there. My apologies. Uh, Even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that, that Christians have spiritual gifts. You know, we, we don't, there are churches that say, well, you're not really a Christian unless you speak in tongues uh, or if you have this gift or that gift. No, no, no. We have... We have the, the gift of eternal life in Christ. Rejoice not that you cast out demons, but that your name is written in the book of life. That's, that's the thing, right? Um, that's the spiritual gift in which we're not lacking anything. Uh, in any case, uh, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that Christ will return in that, uh, that sustenance that we have in him. Uh, by the word, right? As as we we hear that word, as we receive his gifts, the absolution, the forgiveness of sins, the Lord's Supper again and again, um, he sustains us guiltless. Um, think about think about the Lord's Supper. Uh, this is my body given for you, for the forgiveness of sin, right? That uh, that sustains us in that guiltlessness. Uh, so nine, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and that is that promise that God is the one who works this. He, you know you. There is, uh, once, once we've been called to faith, we do understand that there's a cooperation with the Holy Spirit. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's God's doing. Even, even then, as the, the confessions, the Lutheran confessions speak of it, it's not like we're, we're yoked two oxen side by side with the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's still the Holy Spirit dragging us along to an extent, right? We're just not, uh, not stopping and pushing against it kind of thing, that, that, against that work, I mean. Um, and we could say against him, against the Holy Spirit himself. Um, 
but uh, but it, but it's his work. He he does it. He he works this in us by his word. Uh, he 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 sanctifies us and keeps us holy in that that Christian faith, right? And thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the uh, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.